Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the continuation in a law cast series talking about the Rule 15C211 requirements. On January 8, 2018, OTC Markets Group submitted a comment letter to FINRA related to FINRA Rule 6432. Rule 6432 requires that a market maker or broker dealer have the information specified in Securities Exchange Act Rule 15C211 before making a quotation in a security on the over-the-counter market. Subject to certain exceptions, Rule 6432 requires that all broker dealers have and maintain certain information on a, on a non-exchange traded company security prior to resuming or initiation, initiating a quotation of that security. Compliance with the rule is demonstrated by filing a Form 211 with FINRA. The most widely relied upon exception is known as the piggyback exception. The 15C211 piggyback exception provides that if an OTC market security has been quoted during the past 30 calendar days, and during, during those 30 calendar days, the security was quoted on at least 12 days without more than a four consecutive day break in quotation, then a broker dealer may piggyback off of prior broker dealer information. In other words, once an initial Form 211 has been filed by a market maker and approved by FINRA, and the stock quoted for 30 days by that market maker, subsequent broker dealers can quote the stock and make markets without resubmitting information to FINRA. The piggyback exception lasts in perpetuity as long as a stock continues to be quoted. As a result of the piggyback exception, the current information required by Rule 15C211 may only actually be available in the marketplace at the time of the Form 211 application and not years later while the security continues to trade. The opening paragraph of OTC Market's comment letter related to Rule 6432 sets the tone for the entire letter, stating, we continue to believe that the cumbersome operational processes around, around Rule 6432 and the related Rule 15C211 under the Exchange Act unnecessarily impede capital formation for small issuers. I agree that the process creates an unnecessary difficulty on smaller companies seeking to access public markets in the U.S. OTC markets suggest that the recent boom in ICOs is a natural response to the difficulties with navigating the capital and secondary markets for smaller companies, including the Form 211 process and DTC eligibility, depositing non-exchange traded securities, and market liquidity. A reworking of Rule 6432 and the interaction with the 45-year-old Rule 15C211 would help improve the marketplace dramatically. Rule 15C211 was enacted in 1970 to ensure that proper information was available prior to quoting a security in an effort to prevent microcap fraud. At the time of enactment of the rule, the internet was not available for access to information. The premise of the rule was to require broker-dealers who would be quoting the securities to maintain information and provide that information to investors upon request. Rule 6432 requires FINRA member, member firms to comply with Rule 15C211 by filing a Form 211 with FINRA. In reality, a broker-dealer never provides the information to, to investors, FINRA does not make or require the information to be made public, and the broker-dealer never updates information even after years and years. Moreover, since enactment of the rule, the internet has created a whole new disclosure possibility, and OTC Markets itself has enacted disclosure requirements, processes, and procedures that didn't exist before. The current system does not satisfy the intended goals or legislative intent and is unnecessarily cumbersome at the beginning of a company's quotation life with no follow through. In the next law cast in this series, I will go through OTC Market's specific recommended changes to the rule. 
I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance and producer of LawCast. Should you have any questions about today's topic, please visit securitieslawblog.com and lawcast.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged. Thank you.